Hi, and welcome to Real Life with Jenny. My name's Jenny Zenepetaratna. Grab your favorite drink and a snack, and we will get started. Today, I have my most favorite tea, Lady Grey Tea, to start off season number two. Woo! And I have a really special treat called Peppa Kaka. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that because it is really a fun story. So a couple episodes ago, or many episodes, I've been asking for new ideas on snacks. And I have a dear friend who is also a pastor's wife and listens to the podcast, she brought me a fabulous bag of snacks to try. And I went in and I found this box of little cookies. There's two boxes. Woohoo! Anyway, there's two boxes. And they on the title, I was like, is this really? And it's called Peppa Kaka. And that may mean nothing to you unless you are from a Swedish family like I am. My family is, I am like 80% Swedish. Um and then 10% Norwegian, and then like 10% all these other things, right? I am very, very Swedish. And so I grew up in a family where Peppa Kaka was something that we made every Christmas. And even my mom, who is not a huge cook or a baker, she made these cookies every single year, and they were very tedious and a lot of work. And so when she wasn't able to make them anymore, now I make them every Christmas for her. I keep, you know, half a dozen for our family and then I give the other like six dozen to her. (laughs) Because it makes a lot. The recipe makes a lot of cookies. But it was so neat that as I um, was gifted something from a dear friend that I actually brought back family memories. And so I just want to thank you for being such a wonderful friend. And just that God gave me something that was really fun. So now I'm eating what I would think of Christmas cookies in May. Woo! Anyway, let's get real. So I know that was a long introduction, but we are on season two of Real Life with Jenny, and I could not be more excited about what God's doing um, in all of our lives and with Real Life with Jenny on Facebook. I'm so excited about getting to know you guys and really doing life together. And that's my whole goal is a community where we can be real and we can cry and laugh and encourage one another. So get involved. Anyway, (laughs) I have been working through some major things in life right now. And I think we all are dealing with um, different issues. And I took a week off because I was burnt out. I was exhausted. I could barely even put two words together. So this could have been a really fun thing if I would have done this last week. But I really needed to refresh and restore some things in my life. And so I stopped reading in the New Testament and I went back to the Old Testament. I just absolutely like treasure the Old Testament. Now the New Testament's great in the Bible. It's great. It is just not as filling to me as the Old Testament stories. I just love the idea of what happens in the Old Testament and the creation of things and I guess the literal creation too, but just the idea of what's happening. And so I started reading in in 1 Kings and I came to the chapter that I have heard and I have read and... I've heard the story preached on and I've heard, you know, Sunday school about it. And it came to me in a new light. So I was reading about King Solomon. So if you don't know who King Solomon is, he's in first Kings, um, a lot of interesting things about him, but he is David's son. And so David was called the man after God's own heart. Like David was an amazing king and he ruled for years and he conquered and he had great battles and he was close with God and he really did some amazing things for the for the kingdom of Israel. And so he's kind of like the standard, like this is what a king should be, and then no one else really meets it. So Solomon was not actually supposed to be king. Now, he was not the firstborn. He was not the one that should have been in line, the way things work. He was anointed king with a roundabout situation. 
and brought to being the king. So he was not necessarily feeling super confident in what he was doing. Now, I know that when we think of Solomon, there are, it's great riches and many wives, and he's got all these great things. But this is the beginning of his story where he is just learning to be king and he's got some really big shoes to fill. His dad was an amazing man. He's not necessarily supposed to be the one in charge and he is in charge. God put him there and he's not really sure that he should be here. Now, I read that. Maybe you don't, but (laughs) that's my interpretation of Solomon. (laughs) And so he goes and does some sacrifices kind of as he's beginning you know, he gets the crown and he's kind of moving in that direction. And he goes and he puts God first. And when he goes, God says, ask me anything, Solomon, and it's yours. Now, I don't know about you, but if God said to me, Jenny, ask me anything and I will give it to you, I've got a lot of things that pop in my mind. Like, God, give me a moment. Let me pull out my list and (laughs) we'll see which one of those things I should do. You know, it's like rubbing the genie bottle and we're always having this discussion like, what would your three wishes be? I don't know that we're always having the discussion. Anyway, (laughs) but you, you have that discussion of like, what should my three wishes be? You can't wish for more. Do I use world peace? Do I pray for more? You know, do I ask for more? Like, what do I ask for with these three wishes? And God says to Solomon, ask me anything and I will give it to you. And Solomon, in his humility, I really believe his humility is here. He says, I need your discernment and your wisdom. He doesn't ask for power. He doesn't ask for riches. He doesn't ask for many wives or land or great battles to be won. He asks for more of God. He asked for his discernment and his wisdom. And that is incredible to me. Like when God says, I will give you anything and you ask for more of him. Wow. Right? That he obviously is the king and anointed for a specific reason. And so that really challenged me because I can get so caught up in my day-to-day needs. I can get so caught up in the things that are maybe trivial and they go away whether you like it or not. I put up on social media, uh, a bad day is only 24 hours, right? It's only a 24 hour period, a bad day. And there's new things that happen the next day that are good and bad, right? (laughs) You know, some things can move over to the next day. But really, a bad day is only 24 hours. And so often we're focused on those 24 hours and what's happening and asking God to help us in that moment when God's saying to us, ask me and I will give it to you. It's like a little kid. And I have spent a lot of time with kids. I love kids. Um, Kids ministry was one of my favorite things I've ever done. Um, And we'll see if God lets me go back to that or not. But um. I love being with kids and you can, they can come to you and say, I'm hungry. Can I have a piece of candy? And you're willing to give them that piece of candy, right? I'm hungry. Can I please have a small piece of candy? And God is saying to us, we're going, God, we're hungry. And he's, and we want a piece of candy. And he's like, but wait, I have a four course meal here. So if you're really hungry, I have a full meal that's beautiful. And there's a dessert at the end. (laughs) Because he loves me and he knows I need a dessert. (laughs) You know, but I'm just asking for a piece of candy. So I have been really like, this has been kind of in my heart. And I'm trying to figure out like, Lord, what should I ask for? Yes, I want more of him. And I want wisdom. And I want discernment. Absolutely. I, those are super important things in my life. The gifts of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Obviously, those are things I need more of every single day. (laughs) Some of them more than others. You know, someday I need a whole lot more patience with myself and with other people. Yesterday was one of those days. I just completely felt overwhelmed by life. It wasn't even anything that needed to be done. I just felt overwhelmed by life. I looked at 
the things that need to be done in the next six months. And I went, I can't do this. I'm overwhelmed. We're doing homeschool. And I just, the idea of homeschool, I want to just pull up my hair. I love the actual part of homeschool, but planning for it, this is not my jam. Like I am a fly by the seat in my pants kind of girl. So this is really tough. <laughs> this whole like planning out high school, ninth through 12th grade. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, it is kind of it, the idea of it just overwhelms me. But if I had taken a moment and said, God, I need more than the piece of candy to get me through today. I need your buffet. Help me have more discernment and wisdom in this area. Help me with that. Um, as I'm walking into this summer, and I'm calling it the summer of miracles because we need some financial miracles this year. Um, we took that big step of faith where I'm no, I no longer have any kind of job. I am now in charge of homeschooling and speaking on the road and the podcast. Like those are my jobs, and that's really scary to me because none of that makes money. Um, <laughs> So I am just going, Lord, how are we going to do this? Like now we're paying for our own insurance, which was a huge step of faith for us. And we've got all these pieces. And I'm like, Lord, how are you going to do this? And so I've been thinking, Lord, this is a summer of miracles. Like I need you to do some big things that I don't know how to do. And that's very true because I don't know how to do this, but God does. And so I have been really challenged by ask me anything and I will give it to you. And he asks for more of God. And God then gives him the riches and the power and wisdom. And Solomon is known as the man that had more than he knew what to do with. Like he had amazing things when you look at the, the his part of the Bible. Like, oh my goodness, he got to build the temple of God. And he had a thousand, wi a thousand wives and concubines. Like, first of all, not a good plan in my mind, but <laughs> it shows his power and it shows his ability to make peace treaties with other countries and his wisdom. Because most of those people, most of those women were from other countries and that he was probably making trades. And that's how they worked back then. Not how we should work now. Just FYI. Um, do not believe that we should, you know, sell off our, our girls. That's not something I'm going to tell you to do. Okay, we just went down a really dark path. Anyway, we're going to come back to Solomon was a great man and he loved God. And so I'm going to encourage you to think about what piece of candy you've been asking for and say, Lord, I actually want the buffet table. I want the four course meal with the dessert. I want more of you. I want discernment and wisdom. But what is that for you? Maybe you're really wise and discerning already. Great. What other thing do you need more of God in? Do you need more patience to, to wait for him to do something? Do you need more joy in your journey? Do you need more love for yourself? And for other people, what do you need more of to actually make your life better? It's not going to fix all the problems, right? I know that this doesn't wash away everything, but God is willing to give us a better gift than what we're asking for. He's willing to give us more than our daily bread. And yes, I asked for my daily bread. But Lord, sometimes we need a big miracle and we need more of you to help us. Well, that's all I have for today. You can find us at Real Life with Jenny on Instagram and Facebook. We would love to connect with you there. You can also find us at ChristConnection.cc slash Jen. <laughs> um, just as we're walking through this week, I am praying that you would find more of the Lord. More discernment, wisdom, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. I pray that as we ask the Lord for more than just the piece of candy that will fix this moment, but we ask him for something that will fix the future too. That we ask him for something big. Like, let's go big here, guys. Let's do this. Let's ask for a summer of miracles. 
Like, Lord, we see this and it does not make sense. And I do not know how you're going to fix it. But Lord, I'm going to trust that you can. Let's pray for our summer of miracles together and see what God can do. Have a wonderful week.